Even if you are not a NASCAR fan, you've probably heard the name Bubba Wallace either in the news or watching a NASCAR race if you are a fan. The NASCAR driver has taken the fan base by storm and over the course of a few months has become one of NASCAR's most popular drivers in the Cup Series. I've seen a lot of videos of Bubba Wallace on YouTube, but none on his path of getting to the Cup Series and rising to be one of the most popular drivers in NASCAR. So without further ado, here is Bubba Wallace's rise to NASCAR. Darrell Wallace Jr. was born in Mobile, Alabama on October 8, 1993. He eventually moved to Concord, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. At the age of 9, he started racing go-karts and eventually would work his way through the ranks, racing bandoleros, legend cars, and eventually late models. Bubba Wallace started racing late models around 12 or 13 years old, which is technically under the required age. Over the next four years, Bubba Wallace would race some great competition at the late model level. He would become one of the youngest drivers to win at Franklin County Speedway at only 14 years old. Over those four years, Bubba Wallace eventually gained some attention from NASCAR's K&N Pro Series, a developmental series formed by NASCAR for younger drivers. Bubba Wallace eventually entered the K&N Pro Series in 2010 through the Drive for Diversity program and drove for Rev Racing as a developmental driver for Joe Gibbs Racing. Bubba Wallace would end up winning the season opener for the NASCAR K&N Pro Series in 2010 at Greenville Pickens Speedway starting from the 7th position. A 20th place finish at South Boston would kick off some numerous top 5 finishes for Wallace, including a win at Lee USA Speedway. Bubba Wallace would end up finishing 3rd in the point standings with a disappointing DNF at Dover in his final race of the season. After the season had ended, Bubba Wallace became the first African American to win a Rookie of the Year award at the NASCAR level. 2011 was another solid year for Bubba, winning three races at Richmond, Columbus, and the season finale at Dover. Despite these three wins, he would finish second in the series standings behind Max Gresham. Bubba Wallace took a major step in 2012 by running part-time for which was then the Nationwide Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. He would also move over to race for JGR full-time in the K&N Pro Series this year as well. Surprisingly, he would only win one race that year at Greensville Pickens Speedway and would finish the year with three DNFs and a final finish of 7th in the standings. But for Bubba Wallace, it didn't end there. He would eventually end up racing at Iowa two times in the Nationwide Series and would also end up racing at Richmond and Dover. During these four races, Wallace would finish top 15 in all of them, including a best 7th place finish at Iowa in a second start and winning the pole for the Dover Fall Race. Bubba Wallace's impressive finishes in his first year at the Nationwide level would land him a full-time ride in the Camping World Truck Series for the number 54 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Bubba Wallace was now racing for one, if not the best team in the Camping World Truck Series. At age 19, Bubba Wallace was in the fast lane. The beginning of the year was filled with ups and downs for Wallace, recording some top 10 results, but also having some very poor finishes. He would get in a scuffle with Ron Hornaday at only his third Truck Series start at Rockingham and would go on to finish 27th. He would once again win a pull at Dover for the spring race, but would finish in the 10th position. Over the course of the year, Bubba Wallace would record 5 top 5s and 12 top 10s, but those top 5s weren't even close to his highlight of the year. Wallace would start 3rd for the 2013 Kroger 200 at Martinsville Speedway, the 4th to last race of the Truck Series season. He would find himself in the lead on a restart with 7 laps to go and would drive away from the field which included Cup Series driver Denny Hamlin. It would make Wallace the first African American driver to win in one of NASCAR's National Series since 1963 and would earn him an iconic grandfather clock. The last three races of the season would be mediocre for Wallace, but 2014 would bring more promise. Once again, Bubba Wallace would run full-time for KBM in 2014. His year would not start out how he would like it to with a DNF at Daytona after he was involved in a multi-truck crash. He would start on the pole for the second race of the year at Martinsville and finish in the second position. Over the next four races, Bubba Wallace would score only one top 10 finish at Texas in which he finished 10th in. As Gateway rounded the corner, Bubba Wallace found himself in a slump with poor finishes except the Martinsville race in the spring. The trucks would return to Gateway for the first time since 2010 in a wild race which included his teammate at the time, Eric Jones, getting spun out and hitting the wall hard while racing for the lead. Wallace would find himself sitting second on a restart with four laps to go. Wallace would be in an intense restart with Armand Caroga in which he would eventually get around him on the entry to turn three. Wallace would hold off the hard charging Caroga and get his first win of the year at Gateway. Wallace would then finish second at Kentucky and win the pole at Iowa where he would finish 13th. After this, Wallace would pick up a very unique win at a very unexpected track. The Camping World Truck Series would return to the Eldora Speedway for the second year in a row for a non-point race shootout. Wallace would find himself absolutely dominating the race, being up front nearly the entire time and holding off one of the best dirt racers in the country in Kyle Larson. Although it didn't count for points, it was still a huge momentum boost for Bubba. Over the next 8 races, Bubba Wallace would accumulate 3 top 2 finishes and multiple top 10 finishes. Bubba Wallace would once again return to Martinsville where he had been so successful in the past. Wallace would complete a clean sweep, winning the pole and race at Martinsville in the fall. Wallace would find himself in the hunt for the championship but would be unable to capture it and end off on a high note. He would go on to win the championship race but still ended up being 34 points behind championship winner Matt Crafton and runner-up Ryan Blaney. 
Wallace would also announce a full-time ride with Roush Fenway Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for the 2015 year. Bubba Wallace's Xfinity season in 2015 was mediocre to say the least. Coming off a four-win season in 2014, Bubba Wallace had some high expectations. He would finish 12th and 11th in his first two races and would record his first top 10 in the series with a 7th place finish at Las Vegas. He would only record one top 5 in the next 8 races while recording two top 10s in the process. He would finally hit a high note winning the pole at Dover in the spring, a track in which he had been very successful at in the past. Wallace would go on to finish 17th in the race. Wallace would not record another top 5 all the way until Road America in late August. Two races later, he would record a personal best third place finish at Chicagoland after running up front in the late going and passing Kyle Larson for third with only two laps to go. Wallace would finish his season off recording four top tens in the last seven races. Overall, despite not having the results, Wallace would end up racing much better competition in the Xfinity Series and would return for the 2016 season in the Xfinity Series. Wallace would kick off the 2016 season with a top 5 finish at Daytona and would continue to run much like he did in 2015 with some good finishes and some poor ones. He would finish 3rd at Fontana in a crazy finish with Kyle Busch and Daniel Suarez both losing the lead in the final lap. Wallace would record a personal best second place finish at the Dover race in the spring, fending off Alex Bowman and losing to Eric Jones on a late restart. The rest of the season would prove to be a tough one for Bubba. His best finish after the Dover spring race would be 5th and would finish the season with 9 top 10s and 3 top 5s. Wallace's average finish would be 16th and the 2016 season would come off as a disappointment for some fans, but opportunities lied ahead for Daryl Wallace Jr. in 2017. 2017 would be an interesting year for Bubba Wallace to say the least. He would begin running for the first 12 races in the Xfinity series and plan to run full time. He would finish 33rd at Daytona, a track that hadn't treated him well in the past, and accumulate not one, not two, but five 6th place finishes in a row at Atlanta through Texas. He would run Xfinity races all the way to Pocono until one of the biggest races of his career dawned upon him. In May of 2017, Eric Almirola suffered a major back injury during a spring race at Kansas. He had to be cut from his car and eventually transported to a hospital where they had discovered a compression fracture to his T5 vertebra. Wallace would be scheduled to run four races for the team as a relief driver for Almirola, and the first race came at Pocono. Wallace would start from the 16th position on a very hot day in the Pocono Mountains. He would bring the number 43 Smithfield car home in the 26th position, but it didn't end there. Wallace would pass out during an interview with MRN after getting out of his car on pit road. Quite the way to end off your first Cup Series race. Wallace's finishes would only improve with a 19th place finish at Michigan, a 15th place finish at Daytona, and a personal best 11th at Kentucky. He would run one more Xfinity race for the year at Chicagoland and earn a 10th place finish after starting 16th. Wallace had proved he could bring a cup car home in one piece and the next year was only to get better. Wallace would run full time for Richard Petty Motorsports in 2018 filling in for Eric Almirola. He would start off 7th in the Great American Race in a very fast race car. Almirola, in which Bubba would find himself filling in for, would end up leading the race on the final lap only to get turned by Austin Dillon who would go on to win the race. Wallace would end up edging out Denny Hamlin against the wall for second place and an emotional finish for the rookie. Over the next five races, Wallace wouldn't even finish in the top 20 and despite the 500, his year was off to a rough start. He would rebound with an 8th place finish at Texas which would be his only top 10 until Phoenix. Wallace would end up crashing at Pocono, Bristol, Indianapolis and the Charlotte Roval which was a very bad weekend for Wallace by the way. The year was not a success by any means for Bubba Wallace, but was a great year to get a feel for the Cup Series. Wallace would have only one top 5 and three top 10s over the year with an average finish of 25th. 2019 seemed to be more of the same for Wallace. He would crash in the Daytona 500, ending his hopes at winning the Great American Race. He would have numerous 20th to 30th place finishes throughout the year with the exceptions of a 15th place run at Daytona in the summer, a 14th place finish at Bristol, and a near career best 3rd place finish at Indianapolis for the Brickyard 400 race in which he was up front for almost all of the later going. He would have two top 15 finishes after this point and would finish the season off with only one top 5 and one top 10 finish. Wallace would finish 28th in the point standings and would continue to race full time for Richard Petty Motorsports. And that brings us to now. Wallace has had arguably the best year of his career so far with four top 10s coming at Las Vegas, Bristol, Indianapolis, and Michigan. Las Vegas has been his best finish of the season so far but his finishes aren't the highlight of the year. Love him or hate him, Bubba Wallace has changed the sport of NASCAR for this year and forever. Wallace is leading a movement to get a new generation of NASCAR fans to race, watch, and become fans. Multiple sports figures have tweeted out at Bubba supporting his movement and what he stands for. He ran a very solid race at Martinsville supporting a Black Lives Matter paint scheme where he finished 11th. Wallace has a bright future in the sport of NASCAR. His popularity is building up and his finishes are slowly becoming better. 
His contract comes to an end this year, and there are mainly two targets for Wallace. Staying at Richard Petty Motorsports or switching to Chip Ganassi Racing. No matter what happens, Bubba Wallace's rise to fame in NASCAR has been nothing short of spectacular. With all the lower divisions and smaller series of stock car racing these days, it's very hard to make it to the highest level of competition. Not only has Bubba Wallace made it to the highest level in NASCAR, he's created a huge fan base for himself and has drawn in new fans from all over the country and given them a reason to watch the awesome sport of NASCAR. I hope you guys enjoyed this new type of video, and if you'd like to see more videos like these in the future, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to subscribe. You guys are the best and thanks for all your support. Have a good day.